Well, as the nation continues in its third week of protests over the killing of George Floyd, many people, including teens and adults, have actually moved to the forefront of the demonstration and other protests across this region. They are demanding a few things, an end to police brutality, criminal justice reform, and an end to racism. Many youths are tired of the protests falling on deaf ears, so they're utilizing very different approaches. One group has actually introduced an economic boycott aimed at creating an economic dent so the lawmakers are able to create leg legislation and deal with the matters at hand, ensuring protection for the people of the African diaspora in our country. Here now to prefer, pro I should say provide better insight uh, is the founder of Buy Black 30, and we've got Darissa White, as also social workers and organizers of the Black Black 30, Kiara Mallet and Brian Khadib, and we welcome you now to the show, and uh, good to have the three of you back. Thank you. Good to be Thank back. You. Thank, Thank you. you for having me. Good, good. Well, we saw you on a couple of other platforms, but I'm glad to have you here sharing with us as we talk about this issue, and um, I want to, first of all, you know, talk about, as we look at the death of George Floyd, and what rises up in you uh, after seeing such a horrific video and literally a death on video, what really rises up in you as an activist? I mean, for me, I am angry. I'm frustrated. I, as a black woman, I feel helpless. I feel like I can't do anything. Um, and that was the basis of this movement. It's an economic protest. It is an economic boycott we are going to go where we are appreciated, where we are valued. Um, you know, people can post on social media all day long, right? But if you're not really putting your money where your mouth is, it is a moot point. Brian, talk to us a little bit about the work, uh, economic impact, really huge. Um, so talk to us about how you're looking to make an economic impact and address these disparities. Um, so as we spoke about it before that, um, the only time you really see change in America is through blood and money. And, um, and I think that since we're the ones who are dying, we see the blood part. And um, due to uh, like all the things that's been happening, you know, Darissa led this movement because we just started talking about our research in the boy, uh, Montgomery boycott. And it was like up to like 65% of their income was depleted because of the boycott. And I think that right now, this is a chance for everyone, or black people to use their voices and uh, get their worth. And um, it's pretty interesting how like in all industries, uh, this is really a topic on social media. The fact that, that n women are not getting paid enough. Um, uh, models are not getting paid enough. You know, news reporters are not getting paid enough. Like in, I think this is the moment since, uh, really big corporate white corporations are afraid of losing, they're afraid of losing our money. They understand that uh, we have value. And when we use our value, change really happens. And it's interesting to see how um, even San Francisco literally just started the reform, police reform with utilizing citizens to uh, respond to non-criminal calls. So it's just interesting to see how like, we know that money is real, money makes it happen. And, and it's interesting to see how um, that's when things really do change. And um, it's a, they're having a decline. They're having a decline with black support. And it's so wild that a lot of uh, corporations are, are reaching out to keep that black dollar, like to keep that black dollar. They're like making Black Lives Matter statements and they really don't really value us like Darissa said. And I think that the fact that we're with our movement, we're valuing ourselves as well as making, uh, dismantling all the stigmas associated with black supporters and blacks and black supporting each other. Mm -hmm. So I think that that's what matters the most right now is the fact that we are creating new relationships with black consumers and black customers. And yeah. we're just dismantling all the stigmas associated with black supporting black people supporting each other. And change is really happening right now. Like there's a there's an up war far as like finances with company with black companies that they're, they're really making a lot of money right now and i just we just hope with our movement that it's just consistent and it's a a, a lifestyle change akir we see a lot of businesses and corporations they're literally <laughs> running for their lives saving their lives because they recognize that 
uh, in order to really align with what's going on today, they're going to have to make a stand and they're going to have to make a statement. Um, and for some, there's some genuine, uh, you know, there's some genuineness uh, in it. Uh, and for others, uh, you can almost, we all see right through it. Um, but talk to us about how we're going to do this in our community in terms of making that adjustment, making that economic investment, and also divesting uh, from people who aren't really supportive. Wow, that's an awesome question. And the, the first way we have to start is by being intentional. We have to plan it through. So, you know, Darissa came up with this wonderful four-step plan so that it's not like, oh my goodness, what am I going to do? Where am I going to get, where am I going to get my clothes? Where am I going to get my streaming? Where am I going to get my food? You know, so the the great thing about the challenge is that it helps people plan ahead of time. It's like, oh, okay, well, I know that, hey, for me, I'm having a birthday shoot for my birthday at the end of the month. So instead of just waiting to the last minute to go to the mall, it's being conscious about it. Like, okay, well, let me seek out these awesome black fashion designers and then let me invest, right? Because it may be, it may be a little bit more expensive, but let me be able to invest so that that black business can hire maybe more black employees, right? And maybe put more money into that community that they are in. So it's, it's, it may be a little bumpy initially, but once we change the way that we think, we have to change our process, right? And once we plan for it, it's going to be a success. So we're in week three, okay? And I'm already making major changes. So I was like, uh, we went to go get some food, and I was like, oh, is that black-owned? You know, uh -huh. you have this black-owned restaurant, you know, it is fire. You know, so it's having that conversation, especially, like, with my colleagues, you know, we go get coffee all the time. I'm sorry, but I don't think that the Starbucks campaign was genuine. Um, I think that we can go into people's track records, right? Because we got the internet, we have history. And we can go into companies' track record and say, oh, well, this, just two years ago, wasn't the police called on two black men in your store? Mm -hmm. And then you closed down your whole stores for the whole nation, right? And now we're here. So, so that's a history, right? And, mm -hmm. and we black folks, we need to remember that history and not be so quick to say, oh, well, let me, it's, it's convenient, right? Because it's really convenient for me to go to Starbucks, put it on my app. They have it at, at the door for me. I don't even have to talk to them, right? It's really convenient. But I can also go to this black coffee shop, right? I can make an effort to leave five minutes earlier so that I can support. Right. No, you just blew up my whole spot about Starbucks, but I'm gonna come back to that later on. That's ah, all right. <laughs> Let me just go to Darissa now and maybe Darissa go. So listen, you've got this four point plan. So share a little bit about the plan so that people can understand how they can really support their own. Absolutely. So the there's four phases, right? We don't want to overwhelm people with going cold turkey on mainstream buying. We don't want you to just say, you know what, I'm no longer you know, buying from Walmart. I'm no longer buying from Target because we understand that that's unrealistic. You know what I mean? Some things you absolutely need to get from bigger corporations to buy black first, right? And when you think about it, buying black is an afterthought in a lot of cases. We don't really consider that. We always consider going to Rite Aid down the street or to Kiara's Point, going to Starbucks or, or wherever the case is. But if you actually go and do the work and research these, you know, these black owned businesses, they're everywhere. So the first phase is really just the most simple. It's just cutting out non-black owned eateries and restaurants. That's it. Um, and that's also followed by grocery stores cutting those out, replacing them with minority owned grocery stores, because I, we know that black people do not have access to the food chain like that. So minority owned business stores like Muslim, I mean, uh, grocery stores like Muslim or Latin. Uh, the second phase is, let me pull it up. I'm so sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the second phase, it, I mean, Kara, you can feel free to jump in too. Yeah, the second phase is um, the fashion point of it. So not shopping at any non-Black retails, which for me, listen, it has been fascinating shopping Black, okay? Because it, they're, the models look like me, okay? I'm, I'm you know, curvy, and it was, it's been beautiful. It's been beautiful. The third phase is what we're on right now, and it is very challenging Okay, that is the streaming source. It's very challenging. Right. And Darissa can finish up with the fourth one. A, a lot of people, we were just, we were talking about in our group chat, we have like a team group chat, 
And when the third phase came on Monday, we were all like, oh, which one are we going to cut out, y'all? But it's like, you have, like, let's just do it, you know? Look at these companies, less than 4%, less than 4% are Black employed, are Black employed. Netflix is not Black employed. iTunes is not Black employed. You know what I mean? So if you think about it, let's spend our money where there are Black employees and there mm -hmm. are representation. So, I mean, I I'm removing my Netflix today. I removed Spotify already. Really? I did. I did. Yeah, I did. I did iTunes, which is, oh, I have some good playlists. <laughs> right. It's hard. <laughs> and so you replaced it with what? With Tidal. You can replace Tidal. it with Tidal. Tidal is a black owned Tidal. streaming service for music. Uh, Quibbly is a net, it's kind of like a Netflix alternative. Own, it's similar to a Netflix alternative. Um, there's there's places there's things out there that you can replace it with and we're gonna post on the page we're actually posting today what you can replace these services with um it's, it's also really quickly not to cut you off Darissa, but we want people to start doing more education more research too so you know it's good to turn off hulu or netflix for a little bit and put pick up a book and learn something more about our history exactly right. uh, let me let me let me jump over to Brian right quick because I want to talk about that mental component, right? Because when you talk about shifting out and doing that, that takes a great deal of, of emotion and it also takes a great deal of mental. So give us about the mental shift that has to occur in order to be able to do this. Um, I think for me right now, uh, I think uh, last time we talked about this, we talked about um, black folk actually going to therapy. So if, changing your lifestyle right now is a very uh, cultural shock for you. Like with buying black, I think that there is a, a magnitude of free therapy services that you can, you know, start with. Cause the streaming part, you see, I was quiet. That's, that's, look, that's, <laughs> that's hard. I am a music person. I need to have access to all music at all times. So I have a plethora of them. I have Tidal, I have Spotify, you know, just, you know, I need to have access to for music, but, um, but I don't need to go to a Walmart and I damn sure don't need to go to Starbucks at all. Uh, it's black coffee shops around me. And, um, but I do think, again, it, it can start with like just having the patience and the, the know-how, like right now utilize resources like Buy Black 30 in order to, to give you that, uh, that, that head start with this process. It's very, this is really hard. And it's a very uh, strenuous in, on the mind. I think um, there was moments I was so angry and you know, shed a few tears you know, throughout this process, the last couple of weeks, because we're, we're taking a stand. So I think that if, if you really serious about this, you will have some like withdrawals and um, it, it will play on your mind. So I think uh, having access to uh, relationships where, where you can have these very uncomfortable conversations, also having access to resources and utilize those resources, DM us, email us. Um, and if you see some free services for like mental health services, just try it out. And I also tell my friends be due to the fact that I'm in mental health, I let hey, I'm gonna try six sessions with you to see if we can do long term care. And one of my friends, Darissa, can tell you that she used that in that developed developed a very good relationship uh, starting relationship with her current therapist. So um like we just have to have the ability to like utilize the resources because the resources are here and search for the resources and, um, and really process the fear we have with utilizing the resources because change is extremely hard. It's so hard. No lie, I, I almost, like I love Starbucks, but I dislike them very well too. And I'm not right. going there no time soon. So I think that um, there's this thing that we have called black integrity. And it's so weird that me and Darissa, we really talk about black integrity all the time. It's just this different level of consciousness where you, will not allow things to um, disrespect your blackness first. And that's just what it is. So I have black integrity. You won't see me at no damn Starbucks no time soon. <laughs> All right. Me well, we either. Got, yeah. Me yeah, too. I'm not going to, listen. All right, I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to say, yes, you're right. Starbucks is definitely uh, one of those people that needs to be called into accountability. Got to leave it there, guys. Thank you so much for uh, sharing with us. Listen, we've got the information at the bottom of the screen. Uh, by Black 30, how you can stay connected. Definitely check them out on the social media platforms. Thank you guys for sharing with us here 
on the show. Thank you. Thank you.